Now returning back to the PowerPoint presentation. We will now introduce an alternative model to the differential equation that we introduced earlier. As has been sort of demonstrated is that sometimes we want to remain in the Laplace domain because uh, the mathematical operations can be easier. Uh, for example, differential equations become algebraic equations. This is going to be shown in, in further detail as, as we go along here. Therefore, it's useful to be able to model a physical system in terms of its uh, Laplace transformed function. In particular, the transfer function is defined as the ratio of the Laplace transform of the output to the Laplace transform of the input and it assumes zero initial conditions. So this is the general form uh, we'll call G of S, the transfer function, i.e. our system. For example, um, it could be an electric motor and U is the input and Y is the output. So U could perhaps be voltage and Y perhaps could be speed. So that's the general form. Transfer functions in general characterize the input-output relationship of a dynamic system without taking into account the effect of initial conditions. So it just characterizes the response of Y um, in response to U. Transfer functions are a property of the system itself. It doesn't depend on the type of forcing input. Transfer functions have units but do not provide information concerning the physical structure of a system. They only apply to linear time invariant systems because you cannot take a Laplace transform of a nonlinear function of time. And they make combining systems very easy. So each of these aspects of a transfer function won't necessarily be uh, apparent at this point, but I will try and point them out as, as we go through some examples. So the approach that we're going to use for finding a transfer function is, is as follows. Transfer functions are found from differential equations. So we, for example, could derive the differential equation model from first principles and then transform it into transfer function form. First, we need to identify what is the input and what is the output. In this case, let's go ahead and say that y is the output and u is the input. In general, this is sort of a design decision. We could define a transfer function where the speed is the output, or we could define a transfer function where the acceleration is the output. It just depends on sort of our point of view, what it is um, that we are considering as designers. We then take the Laplace transform of the differential equation, assuming zero initial conditions. So we basically take the Laplace transform of this whole differential equation. If we started with the first term and you looked back in your Laplace transform properties tables, the constant will come out front. A third derivative in the time domain becomes multiplication by x cubed in the Laplace domain. And then you also have additional terms due to the initial conditions. So s squared times the initial condition of y in the time domain minus s times y dot of 0, the initial velocity condition, minus y double dot of 0. So that's the most general form of that property. But since we're assuming 0 initial conditions, all of these terms go away. Therefore, when we take the Laplace transform, we'll end up with an s cubed term for the third derivative, an s squared term for the second derivative, an s term, and so on, giving us something of this form. The final step is to rearrange that expression into the form of a transfer function, which is output over input. Looking at the left, um, our output is y of s, we can factor a y of s out of um, that whole side, leaving y of s multiplying a polynomial uh, a0 s cubed plus a1 s squared plus a2 s plus a3. On the right hand side, we have our input u of s, which we can all factor out. Also factor out, we can divide u of s to the left 
in order to get output over input and we can divide we can divide the polynomial in terms of the a coefficients to the right to give us this form so this is our transfer function output divided by input looking at another example uh, this differential equation we have derived previously representing a drive line. Uh, it says find the transfer function for the following where t of t is the input and theta of t is the output. So again this is the design decision and it's the first step in the process to de define what is the input and what is the output. So that's been done for us. We're defining the torque being applied to the one end of the drive line as the input and the sort of twist or displacement of the one end of the drive line as being the output. Again, that's a, a design decision. The second step is to take the Laplace transform of the differential equation. Since we're assuming the initial conditions are zero, when we take the Laplace transform of theta double dot, we will just get s squared times theta of s. A first derivative will become multiplication by s. Plus transform of theta will become theta of s, and the Laplace transform of t will become t of s. The third step is then to rearrange this into the form output over input. So on the left, we can factor out theta of s, leaving us with a polynomial js squared plus bs plus k. You can divide t of s to the left, divide the polynomial to the right, and that gives us the form of our transfer function output over input. And so looking at this, we notice a few things. One, um, it doesn't depend on the forcing input at all. Uh, this is represents the drive line no matter what type of input torque we have. This is what the drive line looks like, whether or not the torque is applied in a step, whether the torque is applied sinusoidally, so the transfer function doesn't depend on the forcing input, the form of the forcing input. We can also see that since we assumed zero initial conditions, it doesn't capture the effect of initial conditions on the system. And the transfer function does have units where the units are the units of the output divided by the units of the input. We'll just make an assumption, say that uh, the displacement, the angular displacement or the angular twist is represented, is defined in radians, and let's say the torque is defined in newton meters. And so these are the units of the transfer function, but they don't necessarily tell us anything about the internal structure of the system. So we don't necessarily know what the coefficients in the various polynomials mean, what they physically represent, unless we derived it from first principles. So that is the resulting transfer function for this example. It's also important to note that we're unable to take the Laplace transform of nonlinear functions of time. So all of these thetas are theta of t. And so if, if um, this differential equation would have had theta dot squared or sine of theta of t or anything like that, we would not have been able to represent the system as a transfer function.